What on earth are you doing now, Daddy? What am I going to do with this? This is a very heavy um, burl or burr, depending on which side of the pond you're from. And it's an Aussie one, I believe. I bought this a long time ago off John Davis RPT. And uh, I don't know if it's brown Mally or red Mally, as it's called, but it's, uh, yeah, it looks very reddish. So perhaps it is red. Yeah, it's neither of those. It's cooler bar. Definitely cooler bar. But we'll find out when I turn it. Well, I think uh, I'm going to try and make a slightly different bowl with this. See if I can preserve as much of the, the wood as I can. That's the plan. Here it is. I've milled out a uh, bit in the top there um, to put a face plate. I've got this little uh, Easywood Tools face plate I'm going to put in there. I did this with a big force and a bit on my drill press and a chisel just to uh, get that in there. I've taken the uh, corners off on the bandsaw, rounded it off. So I'll screw that on and then we'll get it on the lathe. Well, here it is on the lathe. It's very heavy and a little bit out of balance, which a lot of these pieces are due to the irregular shapes. Uh, caused quite a wobble and it's very very hard I was uh, constantly going backwards and forwards to the um, the pro edge sharpening machine using a half inch bowl gouge uh, because it's got a very big handle and uh, a lot less chance at chatter it's turning these hard out of balance pieces you can get quite a shake on if you're not careful Wherever possible, I'm using push cuts because uh, you can get quite a lot of tear out and break out with these uh, irregularly grained pieces of wood. I'm just uh, doing push cuts here, trying to create the correct contour for the bottom of the bowl. I haven't quite decided on the final shape at this point. There is quite a sort of a dent in the side, you know, a natural fold in the side which uh, could cause me some problems later and I'm just wondering whether to try and turn that out or keep it I don't want to turn away any more wood than I really need to it's precious this wood and, and it looks beautiful so I'm going to try and keep that if I can as you can see this wood is very very dusty to work with you don't get many clean shavings at all I actually wrapped it up in polythene for a little while because so I went away and then came back to it sort of with fresh inspiration. So I'd uh, decided I was going to combine this with resin. And here I'm just doing a few more cuts just to uh, finish shaping it. And uh, then marking out the base for uh, putting the chuck jaws in and just cutting a recess here with an Easy Wood Tools carbide parting tool. And these carbide tools are great on these hard burls. But I've reversed it now, the face plate's off, and it's now on the easy chuck. And I'm using an easy rougher here. And as I said, fantastic on these rock hardwoods. This tube fits perfectly, and this is going to form the inner mould. And I'm cleaning the surface of the burl with a little wire brush on my Dremel. I'm sealing the surface of the wood using a bit of polyurethane resin. This is Opticast 1000 and there it is all sealed and that tube in the middle is fixed now. I'm recycling a bit of HDPE from this old carton. Makes great mould material this stuff. So you cut out a sheet of that and I needed a couple of bits but I hot glued it and fixed it around the sides of the bowl. This forms the outer wall of the mould. So we've got an inner and an outer wall to minimise the amount of resin I use. Notice I put it upside down uh, to keep the dust out. This is Opticast 3000 polyurethane resin. This is from MBFG in Belfast. I'll put links to, uh, to it in the description. But this is a fantastic um, water clear resin. 
as I said, it's polyurethane and it's very slow set and ideal for these big pores. You know, it doesn't uh, overheat. And it took a couple of mixes just to fill it up, but you got plenty of working time with this resin. Then it was into the pressure pot at 60 psi, left the pressure on uh, for the full 48 hour cure. It's quite a slow curing one, this one. And uh, I then left it for but probably about three more days after that just to fully cure once it come out of the pressure pot. And there you can see that lovely glassy uh, finish. I'm peeling off the HDPE and the hot glue. And uh, I'm liking the look of it. Chiseling out that plastic tube in the middle. It's better if you can get these bits of plastic out because they fly off when it's on the lathe. There it is, all ready to go. And uh, it's off to the Yandel show with it to use as a demo piece. And here's some iPhone footage from the Yandel show. And I'm using the uh, Easywood Tools negative rake cutters here. I was on the Easywood Tools stand demonstrating these. And you see the beautiful ribbons coming off this, uh, this resin. Got to have a bit of slow mo, of course. The obligatory Yandel sl slow mo this time, and you get these lovely ribbons coming off. But no chipping out at all, and this is very hard resin. But yeah, it works beautifully. Really pleased with this. Is that off the top? Yeah. It's good yeah. That's a better look, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I did a little bit of sanding at the show, uh, but I did most of the sanding when I got home. Just checking progress with my glow force. Last week I was at the Yandel show down in Martock in Somerset, and I was on the Easy Wood Tools stand, and uh, I did some work on the this uh, video project on the stand, and I filmed some of it, so hopefully I've managed to edit that into the video. Thanks to everyone who came and said hello at the Andal Show. It was great to see everyone. And thanks to Richard Bennett for organising the uh, barbecue on the Friday night. That was great fun and lovely to meet up with everybody. Something else I used at the Andal Show was the new Easywood Tools wire burning kit. And uh, had a bit of fun just experimenting with these rough turned uh, wooden spheres. So I did this sort of, um, I don't know, global type thing. Uh, she looks almost like it's segmented and you could exaggerate that by staining and things. One thing I, I did do at the show uh, on the stand was I reverse mounted this again and actually um, cut a larger recess in the bottom of the bowl because I wanted to use some bigger chuck jaws. Uh, this has got quite heavy uh, since the resin has been added. It was a heavy piece of wood anyway, but it's very heavy now. Um, and I've uh, made a larger tenon because I've got my new CJ150 2 chuck jaws. So yeah, yeah, let's get on with some wood turning. Yep, so we're back on the lathe, quite a bit more sanding and then uh, some sanding sealer and then Yorkshire grit microfine. Loads of it, working it and working it until you get this lovely luster on the uh, on the wood and the uh, resin. And uh, then it's time to do some uh, deep hollowing. And this is a uh, special head in the way hollowing and I managed to mess up a lot of footage with my head in the way. But there wasn't much to see anyway. Changed the camera angle, same fat head. Anyway, then more sanding and uh, Yorkshire grit until I get it to uh, the state that I'm happy with. And as you can see, it's beginning to look good. Bit of chestnut uh, microcrystalline wax just to protect the wood when I do the next stage. Here it is being put onto the vacuum chuck. I'm reverse mounting it onto the vacuum chuck. Uh, using the tailstock to line up the chuck and then removing the, uh, the easy chuck so it's now on the vacuum chuck. Tailstock support whenever possible just for extra security. Bowl gouge just to remove that recess. And then uh, Easywood number one hollower with a negative rake tip on it just to tidy that up. And uh, this gave a lovely finish straight off the tool on this um, very hardwood. Uh, a bit of sanding, hand sanding, and then uh, tailstock out of the way and a bit of power sanding just to get that nice flat base. All ready for uh, my brand. 
I just burnt my logo on there with my branding iron finished the base in just the same way sanding sealer Yorkshire grip and then we're on to buffing using the buffing wheels and I used um, first of all smurf poo or blue polishing compound and uh, then finished off with some Vonax for the to get that real glass like finish and it did take a lot of work with the buffing wheel but it was worth it out in the uh, garden um, lovely autumn day and uh, here's the bowl all done as you can see I'm covered in uh, fluff from buffing and uh, and it has taken a lot of buffing just to uh, get this absolutely glass like uh, there's nowhere to hide with a project like this because um, this forms a lens and magnifies everything but I'm really pleased with how that's come out it's a chunky bowl I finished the bottom turned away the uh, the recess for the chuck I haven't quite decided what to call it yet I think I'm going to call it the Martian bowl because uh, you know it looks a bit like the Martian landscape in the film The Martian and anyway, I'm delighted with how it's come out it's um, it's worked really well and uh, yeah I hope you've enjoyed the video and uh, yeah all you who saw the bowl in process at Yandles on the Easywood Tools stand well there it is please like share and subscribe and I'll be back soon with some more videos thanks again for watching folks I hope you enjoyed that video I'm certainly very pleased with this piece it was uh, it's one of my favourite turned pieces. Um, it's got a lovely weight to it. There's a few stills here just showing the uh, Martian landscape. And uh, as I said, please like, share and subscribe. It costs nothing to subscribe. And thank you very much to all my subscribers. I really, really appreciate it. I'll be back soon with some more videos. I've got lots of uh, various projects planned, hopefully something for everybody. So I'll see you all soon. Thanks again for watching. More rubbish coming soon. Please like, share and subscribe. My daddy needs all the help he can get.